Hello all, this is take two. I just did the complete lesson or tutorial on this and I didn't hit record. So now, hopefully I'm a bit more successful this time. This is what I just made in the first one. <laughs> now I'll show you how I did it. <laughs> so, <laughs> this is using alcohol inks. So I've got a few colours. There's a lot of different brands you can get. But um, I mainly use these ones, which is the Ranger line. They're my main ones that I use. But now, hang on, I'll just grab. So what we're going to do is we're going to be working on Upo paper. So Upo paper is a synthetic paper and it's non-porous. So when you put all your inks and solutions on it, it doesn't soak in. It just sits on the top. If you to try and do this on normal cardstock, the inks will just soak in and they won't move. So you understand what I mean as we go along. So there's a couple of different ways you can do these. And this is one way. So you can put your blending solution on. You need a blending solution to make the colours move. So you can pop that on. Then you can pop your colours on. So we're going to use pool. We'll just put some ink around and we'll use citrus. So you don't want too many colours. If you have too many colours, it'll often go really muddy and yucky and it doesn't look very pretty. Now, you can move it around if you want to manually, like picking it up and oh, let's see if I can pick it up. So you can do that. Or... I use one of these. There's big ones and little ones. And I blow it around with this. If you want to go all out, you can actually get an airbrush and use an airbrush. But I, I prefer to do it this way. So we're just going to move it all around. And if you think, oh, I don't know, it's all right, but maybe it needs a bit more or another colour, then let's bring in... What do we got here? We've got wild plum. Let's see how this looks. Can only try. It's a very strong colour, so it probably doesn't need too much. And then if you like, you think, no, nah, that's too dark. Let's add a little bit more of this solution. Oh, look at that. Oh, gee, that almost looks like a flower now. So you really don't have a huge amount of control over what happens but you get some stunning effects and a bit like using the um, ink sprays you'll never get the same thing twice no matter how much you try so, yeah. all right so we'll leave that one like that and we'll leave, put that one aside to dry if i can get it off there we go I'll just wipe them now. I'm actually using one of the Couture Creations glass mats because this is great, it just everything just wipes off it and it's not going to get stained. Okay, so we'll get another one this time. We're going to add the ink first, so we'll put some ink on there, we'll do red and purple let's see how they go together and then we'll add the blending solution and then we'll move it around obviously the more blending solution you use the more it will move so if you don't want a lot of movement only put a little bit of solution if you want a lot of movement add a lot of solution so there we go. Now, do not try and dry this with a heat gun or anything because it will just melt the Upo paper because it's like a plastic paper. So don't use a heat gun on it. And when it comes to stamping, uh, you need to use um, an ink like um, Stazon or uh, I think it's Versafine, like Onyx Black Versafine ink because you need something that's not going to wipe off but it will take a while to dry so i don't like that i want a little bit more color so i'm going to put some more purple on there and see how we go and 
stamping on UPO, it can be very slippery. So this is where you would need maybe a stamping press or stamping platform so that it doesn't slide as you stamp. Nah, see, I'm not real happy with that either, so I'm going to add some green. I'm hoping it doesn't go all yucky and muddy. <laughs> Oh, it doesn't look green, but it gives it another colour anyway. Um, yeah, how long was I? So, yeah, it's just stamping. So if you're going to use the uh, stays on and that, you need to let it dry. It's not going to dry straight away. It will take quite a while for it to actually dry on the UPO paper because it's not absorbing the ink into the paper. So just allow for that if you're going to use that. But another way, which is what I like doing, okay, that will do for now. We'll just leave that one. I'll just grab one of the ones that I did earlier because it'll be dry. And I'll show you how we can use those prints to... Um, so I'm using a bit of blending solution and it'll just help mop up off my plate. Here we go. So I'm going to use a solution on one of the dry ones. Let's see what we'll do. So with this, we're going to use what's called alcohol lift ink. Now I've got some cardstock here somewhere, yes. So putting this, some people put it across the middle. I personally put it across the top. You just put a bit of a line there. So this is alcohol lift ink and very gently don't put a lot of pressure or the roller won't roll it'll just it's, you just roll it down whoops so that it covers all of the um, paper then put a piece of cardstock over the top and give it a rub now this is just normal 300 GSM cardstock and then you peel it off your UPO paper and you're left with a print of that. Now you could reapply your ink, the alcohol lift ink, and get another print and every time you do another print, what you print will get lighter and lighter. But this now can be used to stamp on so you just trim it up to the size you want and then you can just stamp on that as you would normal cardstock. And then you can still keep that and do maybe a die cut and put the die cut over that and the alcohol ink will show through all the spaces that are cut out. Well, I hope this all makes sense and I haven't mucked it up too much. A bit frustrated at myself and not um, recording the first one <laughs> properly. Anyway. See how it goes. Hopefully you enjoy it and have fun. Any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Just pop a question into the comments. Thank you. Bye.